and you said the ones in the sort of some takeaways from that Yeah, we obviously came out um, super flat, um, which was surprising to me, just given the the history of that game in particular, um, and, and what was at stake in the in the week's preparation um, leading up to kickoff. Um, and then came out at, at halftime and, and started the way I thought we would have started the, the game. Um, so message to the team was that right now we, we are both of those teams. We are the first quarter team and we are the, the third quarter team, you know, albeit as different as they may seem. Um, and we have to decide you know, who we want to be consistently. Um, and if, we can, if we choose to consistently be who we were in, a, in you know, post halftime, which was aggressive and competitive and um, all the things that you want um, in a, a competition, then we have a chance to be a good football team. And if, and if we don't, if we are cautious and try to fill the game out um, with the rest of the schedule that we play, like it's, it's gonna be hard to win a game. So I um, was happy with the way they practiced yesterday um, and the approach they've taken already. Um, and you know, like I've been saying from the start, I, I do believe this team will just continue to get better as the season goes. I was gonna say, one through the start, obviously not working. What do you guys want? Um, just how do you guys get better in terms of players? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, so you, you got to take a step back and sort of look at big picture. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to be, nobody wants to be one and three to start a season. Um, but, but you look at the opponents that we've played um, and, and the chances we've had in the games that we've lost um, and, and just the improvement from week to week, just on understanding scheme and um, not not having like mental errors and, and mental busts and and continue to develop positive practice habits and um, winning mentality and, and all those things. Um, you know, so you don't you don't want to panic with the start, but you definitely want to urgently fix the things that you need to fix. And so you know we're we're doing that currently right now. Um, you know, not, not not wholesale changes, but like tweaks here and there um, to continue to improve the program. So, you know Illinois staff and players well, and they know you well. Uh, how does that kind of uh, work in your preparation? Do you have to be a little bit different than what you think they might expect, or do you think they're doing the same thing? Um, you know, watching their film now, like this is the, I haven't watched their film all season until, you know, when we played Friday, I watched their tape Saturday. Um, you know, they, they have changed a little bit, um, as have we. You know, you, you want to cater and tweak things to be conducive to what your roster is capable of doing and, and what they're good at. Um, there still is a lot of familiarity, like I can tell with what I'm seeing on tape. And obviously, I uh, got to go against uh, Coach Money every day in practice for, for a spring and a fall. Um, so there are some similarities there, but there are also a lot of new faces um, in, the, in, the, in that program as well that, that I wasn't there for. Um, and so, you know, yeah, I, I ran through the scouting report from a personnel standpoint for our offense and just talked about who the guys were on defense and what they were good at and, um, you know, what to expect from a structure standpoint. Um, and then watching the, their offense, you know, you, the, their good guys are, have been their good guys for a while. and. Um, I think Coach Lane does a good job of trying to get his, his playmakers the ball in space. Uh, so there's definitely some familiarity there. Um, but at the end of the day, like we have to worry about what we are doing and, and how we can improve um, so that we can go out there and, and compete our tails off on Saturday. Ryan, regardless of Illinois and your ties to them, I think you feel like this team just needs to beat somebody and kind of flip that script. Uh, is that kind of how you go in? This is, it's one one way from possibly flipping the whole season. Yeah, absolutely, and then and, you know that was also one of the messages uh, we preached on um, Sunday. You know, we we got to get the guys Saturday off, um, met Sunday, and, and watch the film and practice. And so the, the team meeting was, you know, was very candid and um, very honest about where we are and and what we need to do to go to where we want to go. Um, and just that you know, you never know when. Greatness is around the corner. You never know when a streak starts. You know, there's every every great team, every you know, great program has had a, a beginning of something special, and um, you know, it's it is there is some outside and added um, storylines because of, of the nature of the history between um, myself and, and Illinois. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we just we, we need to win a game, and we need to win a game at Ross A. Um, we need to win a Big Ten game. Um, to, to right the 
ship and uh, to start turning the tide in, in our favor. I saw that the, the team is, uh, I guess, officially dedicating the Tiller Tunnel this weekend. Just how much did you know about Coach Tiller before you became a Boilermaker? Um, not a whole lot. Obviously, like I, I didn't know a whole lot about Purdue in general. You know, I grew up on the in the mountains of Colorado, you know what I mean? Um, spent the majority of my life um, in, in the West Coast region. Um, obviously, knew who Drew, Drew Brees was and, and was a big fan of his um, as a high school quarterback. Um, but once I once I got the job, and really started doing some digging and diving on who uh, Joe Tiller was and, and what he means to this university. And so, um, you know, very proud to be in a position that he once filled and, and you know he definitely has set the mark of what it means to be a a great football coach here at Purdue University and um, my hope is the only to to you know one day be mentioned in the same breath as him um, and that would be a, a huge honor. Ryan, what do you think this team's offensive identity is? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think we are. I think we are good at. I don't want to go into like specific on scheme because you know I'm just too to like start working on those things, right? Um, but I think we know who our playmakers are. Um, I think we have a good idea of, of what type of schemes our offensive line is good at. Um, I think we're understanding how HUD sees the game and and what type of plays he likes to run. Um, you know, when, when we get first downs early in drives, it seems like we score points. And so the, the emphasis uh, moving forward would be like, get that first, we got to get that first down. Because when we do it, it, it goes with pace. When we play with pace, it, it keeps defenses on their, on their heels. Um, and we're able to attack, you know, on the ground and through the air. I think, I think we run the ball better than people give us credit for it. Um, and I think we got running backs that's our, that, are, that are good and, and probably need a couple more touches. Yeah, and speaking of the running backs, what would the plan be as far as the use of those guys? And do you think maybe just be a, it should be a two-man rotation? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's two-man, because I still think Dylan is also very capable and, and has a, a role. Um, I think the three of them complement each other well. Um, you know, I think Tyron is playing lights out right now. Um, you know, in in offense and on special teams, like he really has been a a bright spot for us. <clears throat> I mean, every time he's got the ball in his hand, something good happens. You know, Mockaby, as you guys have, have seen, is hard to bring down. Um, you know, we fixed the ball security issues from um, from the Syracuse game, and he's hard to bring down. You know, this his big run the other night was negated by a, a holding call and. Um, you know, those, those penalties really, they stall drives. And so we got to clean up that for sure. But, you know, you know, I think, you know, we've got listed Tyrone and Maccabee as or starters, and, and that's sort of how we view them. You know, the offensive line um, sort of struggled to protect. Well, you know, will, will, will there be any changes? I noticed there's an or between Musa and Daniel Johnson. Just sort of talk about the offensive line, anything that's played so far. Um, you know, obviously having Gus back in the lineup really helps. Um, it, it, he is a really, really good player. Um, and I think it calms everybody else down around him, just the, the way he communicates. You know, we, we move uh, Kaltenberger to guard at times to, to see, you know, how he, how he fits there. And, you know, to be honest, still trying to find the right mix of, of the five guys that would do the majority of the playing. Um, you know, I think Marcus Bow is playing at a high level at, at tackle. Um, and, and like I said, we're, we are understanding what type of plays they are good at running um, and, and are trying to do more of those. Is Ben Frito back this week? Yeah. And then, no, no, no he's so sorry. I, you said Frito? Yeah, Ben no. Frito. He's still listed at the top of depth chart. I wasn't sure if he was back. Or Macy's was going to kick off two field goals this week. Yeah. And then just, the, um, you know, I guess you talked earlier about the, the slow starts. I mean, well, what can you do to start quicker run? I think I ended up, I think you're getting out scored 76 to 48 in the first half. I mean, well, what can you do to, to charge it up and come out and, and get on the board? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you, we, we've had discussions on, you know, do we take the ball if we win a toss to, to try to kickstart it? 
Um, you know, we started on offense first at Virginia Tech, but then we started on offense first the, the other night. It didn't, didn't go so well. Um, you know, I think it, a, part of it is a mentality standpoint and um, and coming out the gate like ready to attack. You know, I feel like right now at times we still are looking around wondering like, you know, are we are we as good as we think we are? Or um, like, it, am, am I going to make the play or is it, you know, my, my buddy next to me going to make the play? Um, instead of just playing a game and, and playing it with aggression. Um, you know, football in its nature, in its nature is an aggressive sport. And so if you're not a, aggressive in your approach, uh, you'll get hit in the mouth. And, then, and we've gotten hit in the mouth in the, the games that we've lost, especially early. Any other questions for Coach? Sam? You've seen this from both sides now, but how big of a deal is that cannon for winning that in, in a rivalry game with a traveling trophy? Yeah, anytime you, anytime there's a trophy involved, it's a big deal. Um, you know, you're, you're playing for something more than just a, a mark in the win or loss column. Um, so, you know, it's uh, something that we've talked about and, and preached. Like, the cannon has to stay, has to stay here. I and mean, we will do everything we can to make sure that, that happens. Just Obviously, Luke Goldmar can move a little bit as mobile. Um, just how much emphasis are you going to put on stopping him in the run game? Yeah, it, it just depends on how much they they try to use him in the run game. Um, you know, he'll have a couple of design runs here and there. Um, but I also don't know like what they think of their their backup situation. Um, and so you see, like the last couple of games, him, him not running as much. Um, but we'll definitely be ready for it. Um, you know, they're, they're going to try to do everything they can to win a game, and I'm sure using quarterback will be part of that. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.